Hey everybody, welcome to Active Self Protection Extra. Today, I am going to make the internet mad because if you are carrying the bungee cord of failure, you are wrong and you should fix yourself. Today's video is brought to us in part by the generosity of LuckyGunner.com. For the best selection of name brand defensive ammunition and lightning fast shipping on bulk target ammo, head to LuckyGunner.com and thank them for being a sponsor of Active Self Protection. Welcome back again. I know that was a salacious intro, but this is a rat's tourniquet. This is no bueno. And I'm here with Brian from Mountain Man Medical. And you know they are the official medical supplier and sponsor of Active Self Protection. I have an official rat's tourniquet here. It is an orange bungee cord. Um, and we have some other options here as well. And so, man, I see people that talk about this one all the time and they, they like to carry it for a couple reasons. Because number one, you can take the bungee cord and you can fold it up, right? And so it makes a, a very compact package. And there is something about compactness. Yes. You know, uh, that you want to be able to put that in a pocket or something like that. So I can take this, it makes it up real small, or I can wind it up super tight. Um, and uh, go to work. I've um, seen some people run through their belt loops too to keep them like at the ready. Okay, so then they've got that there. Um, and basically what you have is you have a bungee cord here that's stretchy and a cleat. That's really all you have here, right? So the idea is, is that I wrap this limb in this thing and then I and, and really super tight until I get occlusion and then I cleat this guy off. That, that's basically what the concept here is, right? Um, but uh, I, I got some problems here from a, a, a practical perspective, right? Um, and I mean, what do you think of that method of occlusion? I, it will work. Um, I know that these do work, but the main problem that you have with that is this bungee is really narrow, narrow, super. Yeah, and one of the main things that you'll have with tourniquets is something called tourniquet pain. Tourniquets hurt if they are applied properly. Never let a casualty talk you at, into loosening the tourniquet. Because it's going to. You know it's about on right when they stop complaining about the wound and start complaining about the tourniquet. Exactly. There's people I've worked on that have lost legs and they complain more about the tourniquet. So it, it will hurt, and that's how you know that you've got it applied correctly. Mm. Now, one of the problems that you have is with this being so narrow, it puts more pressure over a smaller surface area. So what you'll tend to have is more tourniquet pain than with a normal, like a cat tourniquet or a soft right. tie. Or, you know, I mean, look at the difference in width here. So this is a tactical medical tourniquet, right? It's one of the newer Committee of Tactical Combat Casualty Care Approved Tourniquets. And look at how wide this is compared to how narrow the rats is. Now you might say, well, you're gonna wrap it multiple times, but still the pain factor of this narrowness is gonna come in every wrap. Yes. So you're gonna get that in a bunch, whereas this you're gonna get less. Um, I, I think the other part of this is, is that, um, I mean, I don't know, that's a cleat and you go, well, gosh, man, that should work pretty well and be pretty simple, except for how many people know how a cleat works. Yeah. Uh, and so getting it tied off correctly and stuck in there right, and, and should you be able to do that? Maybe. Yeah, and one of the other things that you're gonna have, especially in an emergency, you might need to drag your casualty somewhere. And um, if you're at a risk for that tourniquet getting caught on something, it could kind of pop loose. One of the good things about uh, cat tourniquets, of course, is the way that it secures. You clip it in, tip it across, and now this is not coming, this is not going anywhere. You still have a risk, you need to constantly be checking your tourniquets to make sure they're doing what they're Yeah, they didn't shift to. or those things. Right, um, but you have a very secure tourniquet, whereas this is not, not nearly as secure. So those are the practical problems with that, right? Now, if you needed something that was a really um, compact ability, right? We're gonna talk about them in a different video, but that's why they made the SWAT tee, right? Now, I'm gonna tell you, I don't like this as a primary tourniquet, because I think it has problems too. We'll talk about that another day. But this folds down super small, so if you're like, look, I want something that could function as a tourniquet, but is super duper compact, I would recommend this over this. Now, when we were talking offline, there's another problem I have with this, and that is not the efficiency and the effectiveness of the unit, but it's the people who ran it. Mm -hmm. uh, and you want to describe for us why that's a problem? Well, um, the uh, company that uh, is selling these uh, tri bought a website called TCCC, and they were saying that the rat's tourniquet, they don't say this anymore, but they were saying it in the past that the rat's tourniquet was recommended by the TCCC. 
which is technically true because they bought a website saying as such. But what they were intentionally trying to mislead people into thinking was that it was approved by the Committee of Tactical Combat Casualty Care, which is a government-run think tank, which focuses on trauma medicine in regards to combat. So they were intentionally trying to mislead people, and that's immediately... That's what sketch, guys. That's not sketch. That's immoral. All right, so, so they, okay, so they, again, made a website, ttriplec.com, and then they said, oh, this is ttriplec approved. Well, because they made up this make-believe organization. So that's intentionally misleading people into thinking that the Committee of Tactical Combat Casualty Care, the, which is co, it's like big C, little O, T, C, 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 approved of it when they don't. The Committee of Tactical Combat Casualty Care has not approved any non-ratcheting tourniquet. Um, so it has to either have a windlass or a ratchet. Uh, they're, what, five now, seven? Oh, that are approved? Uh, they yeah. just approved like five additional yeah, ones. I think there's now. seven. Um, it used to be for the longest time was cat and, and soft tea, and that was it. And now they just approved the ratcheting medical tourniquet, this particular one, the tact yeah. tactical medical tourniquet. Um, I, why didn't they name that like the tactical medical nautical tourniquet? And then that way they had a TMN. That's what I say. See, I don't understand. I don't, they could have done a whole theme song and everything. It would have been amazing. Been Come amazing. on, you guys. Marketing. Anyways, this, no dice. So this is not approved by the Committee of Tactical Combat Capture to Care for a reason. Now, that said, I do have a friend who's a firearms instructor who has gotten uh, an occlusion with a rat's tourniquet. You can get an occlusion with this. But I don't think it's a good solution. I think you should keep a Committee of Tactical Combat Casualty Care approved tourniquet on your person at all times. And quite frankly, uh, the founders of this company did immoral stuff and purposefully tried to mislead people. And so this is the bungee cord of failure and you should not own one. And if you do, you should replace it.